Hi, I'm Tara, and today I'm going to talk to you about Tektite and Meteorite. So let's talk about Tektite and Meteorite. Um, I am super interested in these stones because, well, I mean, I don't even know if I should call them stones because Tektite, uh, and I have black Tektite to show you today, and some would say this is Tibetan Tektite. Uh, and I'm really interested in these because they have an extraterrestrial uh, influence or origin, right? So this is Tektite, and then this is Meteorite. And I'm going to tell you the difference. So first, let me just talk about Tektite. So Tektite actually comes from the Greek word tektos, which means molten, okay? And this is very glass-like. Um, it feels different and looks different than, say, you know, obsidian, which is also a glass structure. Uh, and it has these pock marks all over it. There's, there's not, you know, it doesn't really come as a smooth surface the way obsidian does. Obsidian can be very smooth looking. Let me show you a couple more pieces. Here's one that's got more smoothness, but you can still see it's got lots of little craters. And I'm calling them craters because of how they're formed. And here's one that I really like. I think they call these dumbbells online. Now, some tektites sell for like a lot of, like really expensive. Um, so tektite, how does it, how does it form? Because it's not really, it's not really just of the earth. So what happens is a meteor comes through the atmosphere and makes an impact with the earth. And I say it like present tense, but this happened like millions of years ago. So a meteorite came through the atmosphere and collided with earth. And in that collision, boom sand and whatever else is in that region when that meteor hits is thrown high up into the air back up into the atmosphere and then it comes back down and the heat of the atmosphere burns it up and what makes it back to the earth is this now glass-like structure you know when you heat sand it becomes glass you know, so Florida, one of Florida's crystals, and I can't think of what it's called, is a crystal that is created when lightning strikes the sand. So tektite would be formed in that similar way of heating sand. Okay, so you've got whatever, uh, whatever minerals are in the sand, however much silica and all of that that's in the sand, it gets thrown into the atmosphere by the impact of a meteorite, and then it comes back down and takes whatever form it takes. So here's a couple of those. And they do they do come a lot bigger. This is I just happen to have these that are smaller pieces. And they say these are from the Indochina region. Metaphysically, we say that tektite has the energy or the vibrational knowledge of several things. One is the power of that impact. And another one is the the time in which it was created, which the estimates say about 10 million years ago, so a long time ago. And also whatever the ground substance was made of, like I said, the minerals, the silica, and whatever else was in the region where that meteorite hit the ground, those minerals and things would have an influence over each different tektite. And so tektites are interesting because these are black tektites, but there's also um, a green tektite called moldavite, which is actually very well known and very popular. Uh, so moldavite comes from Europe, the Czech Republic region. There's a, a green, like a bottle green color. It's, it's very, it looks like glass, actually. It does look like glass. Not like these, these do not really look like glass because they're black, but it feels like glass. It's not heavy. There's also um, gold or yellow. It's called golden tektite, but it has a yellowy or a gold color, and that's in the Libya region of Africa. Um, and then also in North America, United States, and also in Brazil, there's tektite, and I don't know what color those are. So 
what do we want to know about tektite? It, it works with all chakras. Interesting, right? Because mostly when you see a black stone, what do you think? Root chakra, right? Well, this helps move energy through all the chakras, including the earth star and soul star. So this opens and clears lower chakras, and it initiates the flow of energy from earth, earth star all the way up uh, through soul star. So earth star is below root chakra, below the feet, and soul star is above the crown, above the head. It raises the vibration, just generally speaking, raises a person's vibration. And um, it, when you raise your vibration, usually intuition increases, um, intuitive abilities like psychicness, clairvoyance, and things like that also increase. Um, oh, people tend to see more synchronous moments, right? So things aligning in interesting ways. Um, if you're into metaphysics or a spiritual person, something that you used to call a coincidence, you probably now fought, call synchronicity. So you'll see more of those coincidences, right? Uh, and it helps you open to higher states of consciousness. So making your meditations easier, uh, making lucid dreaming possible if that's something you're interested in, and also manifesting, like empowering your manifestation. And also these clear energetic debris. So clear out your aura, clear out your chakras, which is wonderful. And because it raises the vibration, when you elevate your vibration, people who want to elevate their vibration may be attracted to you, right? So you may find that you're developing new friendships or just people are talking to you in a little bit different way or maybe more frequently. Um, and so physically, what do they do? They help integrate high frequency energy. They accelerate healing. Right, so if you clear your chakras, healing is going to be improved. Uh, emotionally helps to clear the chakras and clear the energetic debris, and so this means more harmonious emotions, so emotionally more balanced, and also feeling empowered and an experience of clarity. And again, that goes back to clearing the chakras. And spiritually harmonizes yin and yang, right? And I've mentioned that in a video before. Uh, extraterrestrial communication, why? Because it's developed from a meteor. Um, which has extraterrestrial material. It's thrown high up into the atmosphere. And, um, and also, there's actually still some debate about whether it is just sand that got thrown into the atmosphere and melted, mo uh, and melted into this structure, or did it come in with the meteorite? And you know, it's, it does have extraterrestrial material, not just an interaction with extraterrestrial material. So they say extraterrestrial communication. And it helps enhance meditation and past life recall. So uh, I feel in, quite drawn to these, and I do feel the, the energy of these when I meditate with them. Um, but compared to meteorite, uh, it's these are just not as strong. They don't, I don't feel the... Um, the vibration of it quite as much. So let's look at some meteorite. So this is a uh, nickel iron meteorite, which is definitely the most common type of meteorite that you can find. So this looks a lot smaller, right, than the tektite, but it's noticeably heavier because it's nickel and iron. Iron is very heavy. And an interesting thing is this is, this is made of the same substance as the Earth's core. Right? Nickel and iron molten in the center of the earth. So the theory says that perhaps this is a planet that collapsed or was destroyed in some way. And it's been cycling through the universe or solar system and it made its way to earth and happened to make impact. So what's the difference between you know, the structure of this or how it came to be part of our planet? This is actually a meteorite that was large enough to make impact with the earth after going through our atmosphere. So it had to be pretty big. Um, so these are actual extraterrestrial material rather than possibly being sand which was thrown into the atmosphere by a meteor. So extraterrestrial, terrestrial would be earthly and extra means beyond earth, extraterrestrial. That's that terminology. Now meteorites, uh, now I don't know about, there's other forms of meteorites. I'm only talking about the nickel iron. There's two other forms that are that are found. I'm just talking about the nickel iron, which interestingly, when I, when I first got a meteorite and I meditated with it, I thought, 
you know, this is metal. You know, what am I really going to notice when I meditate? Maybe I'll feel grounded, but it was kind of the opposite. I actually felt like a really high vibration uh, coming in through the crown chakra, and uh, I was surprised by that. It was very relaxing and, and fairly, uh, I won't say intense, but very noticeable. So these are very high vibration energy. Um, and so meteorites, we, we could say they come from the stars, right? They really were out there, uh, at least in our solar system. Um, or maybe we should say our galaxy, the Milky Way, like at least in our Milky Way galaxy. And they have like a, an electric-like feel to them when you meditate with them. It's definitely noticeable. Um, I didn't expect that because again, it's a metal and I don't always feel that kind of high vibration with metals like pyrite or, you know, silver or something like that. I don't notice, but with this is very noticeable. Um, these can help raise Kundalini energy in the spine and bring forth, um, the, the spiritual fire, the fire of human being, right? Bring that forth in a person. And, um, so whether someone is ready or not, uh, it will stir this fire, right? And get it moving. And so, you know, even if you're not ready, things will start to shift and change. Now, according to, uh, Richard Simmons, who's one of the authors of uh, the book of stones, um, he's, he's got a particular resonance with, um, tectite. So he's, He's got quite a bit in that book about tectite, particularly moldavite. He's got a long story in there about that. Uh, but he does talk in, in pretty good length about meteorite as well. And he says, ready, whether someone's ready or not, this is going to move that spiritual fire. And he said that the, a person's experience or the effect of that depends on the person. Okay, so the effect of the meteor on the person depends on the person. So if somebody is not at a vibrational level where they can work with this, um, they, they'll probably not feel anything. So the vibration's just too low to resonate. It doesn't mean somebody's low vibration, they're just too low to resonate with this particular um, structure. And then there's also, if somebody's just not ready for that spiritual fire to start moving and they're not ready for that transformation, then they may feel overstimulated or just be kind of repelled, like, oh, I just don't like that stone. It's too much at that time for that person. And if someone is ready, they'll be able to just start using and experience that transformation that comes with the utilization of meteorite. Um, so what are some of the things about it also? So physically, we say it strengthens blood, increases strength and stamina. And some of that is coming from that high vibration energy that comes in, helps to bolster your own energy, makes you stronger, not just energetically, but also physically. Whatever the energy does, the physical will follow. Helps move forward in cases of chronic illness. So if somebody's had a long-standing illness, this can help to kind of shift things moving forward. And that's partially because it's bringing in that high energy. Uh, emotionally, it's very grounding, it's protective, and can ease depression. Um, now, when I meditated with it the first time, I really just thought I'd feel grounded, but it was mostly like this high energy that I was aware of. And spiritually, it can also help with having the patience for spiritual transformation. Because there's some people that are just like, I just, I want that transformation. I want the results. I want the end result. But they don't like having to journey for it, right? Having to actually go through and, and have time pass to reach that point. Because... Some people are just like ready for that spiritual transformation, that spiritual elevation. They want enlightenment now. And most cases are that a person has to work towards that and, you know, work on things, whatever that happens to be for each person. So this high vibration allows for inner visioning and spiritual awakening to occur. And that's an interesting piece with meteorite. And uh, because it does awaken the root chakra, it awakens the kundalini energies. So my own experience with these two, I do, I like both of them. I'm just, I'm just interested in them, just the knowledge and understanding of them as well as, you know, meditating with them. And what's interesting is, like I said before, this is a lot smaller than this, but as far as weight goes, they're about the same because glass is much lighter than metal and energetically feel much more with this dense metal piece of meteorite than I do with this lightweight tectite. And what's interesting also is Mostly, like we go, if we simplify using crystals, we'd say, okay, well, you know, a clearer stone, something that's more clear, like um, a quartz stone, like this, 
we know the energy can pass through that very quickly and that's going to bring in a high vibration so that makes sense that goes for all the chakras or the root chakra but then when you get a dense stone like this and say these are for all the chakras that's kind of opposite of you know our standard knowledge about crystals and that's one of the things i like about these and it kind of proves like you know you don't need a clear crystal to have that same action it really is dependent on a lot of factors you know it's not the crystal alone it's you know the process that it went through to be created to come into formation and um, so you know go beyond the initial teaching of crystals to to gain deeper knowledge to understand uh, the crystals better understand yourself better uh, so I hope this this little talk about meteorite and tektite has been helpful um, in kind of understanding the two structures and how they were created and how they're used and some ways that you can use them as well. Um, if you want to visit us or contact us, please visit us at www.soulawakeningcenter.com. Thanks for watching.